yeah, what's going on, fam? It's your man, VKJ, and I'm back with another video. This is episode 20 recap, Lamb to the Slaughter. So where do we leave off? We left off with Daikon discovering that Malcolm and Peter have escaped the punishment trailer. So he calls over George and he's like, hey, what's going on? What's going on, Daikon? How can I help you? He's like, listen, where's Lewis? Get Lewis. Call Lewis right now. So Lewis comes over and he says, the prisoners have escaped. And Lewis is like, what? He's like, yes, the prisoners have escaped. He's like, how did that happen? He's like, I'm asking you. How did this happen? How did the prisoners escape? And they're like, well, you know what? They can't get far. It's like, how do you know? Well, you know, we found a government car outside the campus and we stripped it. He's like, why didn't you tell me? He's like, well, you know, my job is to make, you know, your job easy. You know, we set up bear traps around it. Don't worry about it. We'll catch them. So Daikon smiles in relief and says, you know what? That's fine. He sends off Lewis. And he goes to George and says, you know what? You're making me real proud. And of course, George is like, that's my job, Daikon. That's what I want to do, make you real proud. So, you know, George is like Daikon's little son at this point. And it seems like George is the only one relieving Daikon of his woes. But it looks like Daikon definitely is developing a migraine because there's a lot of frustrating things going on for him. So we got Zane and we got Laura and they're like, where's Ruth? And she's like, well, I can't find her. We got to find her. We got to tell her what's going on. They got to find Ruth to intercept Elder Mother and Bridget. So here we are. Ruth is next to the well and we got Lacey and they are working Lacey like a runaway slave. And that's exactly how she feels. And she's just like, I'm tired of this. I can't stand this. And they have their little bonding session where Lacey apologizes to Ruth and says, I apologize for, you know, trying to rat on you and Tally. And she was like, I was scared. I apologize to you. And Ruth is just like, are you sure? Are you for real? And she's like, yeah. She's like, OK. So Ruth proceeds to say, yeah, this place can drive us all crazy. And then she's like, yeah, Elder Mother Marva and says, yeah, Elder Mother Marva tried to poison me. You know, she's like, for real? She's like, yeah, but I'm on to her. You know, I'm on to her. She's like, okay, that's good. That's good. That's good. So Lacey knows that your elder mother tried to poison her and she gave the sandwich to the hog, right? Gave the sandwich to the hog. So Lacey's picking up on all of this stuff, right? So you see Lacey is still in chains and it's just crazy what elder mother is doing to Lacey. So Zane runs over and says, hey, hey, Ruth, listen, elder mother is taking Bridget to the highest and she's gonna tell him everything whatever you know you did to her whatever and of course Ruth is like oh my god what the heck and she's like no she is not doing that again again this is Bridget's third strike third strike okay she's like what are you gonna do what are you gonna do Ruth and Ruth was like listen I'm, I'm thinking I'm thinking of what to do and she's just like putting the head down like what do I do what do I do of course Zane is looking at Lacey like man this is crazy and all of this and that so Ruth runs off She's like, I got it. I got it. So, you know, they're just like, man, this is bad. And Zane's like, yeah, yeah it's going to be all right. I think I think Ruth has it. And, you know, Lacey's like, I don't think so. I don't think so. You know what? Let's go. Let's go. So they run off and they're about to go help Ruth. So Ruth sees Lewis. He rolls up to her. He says, see, see what's going on here. He's like, what's going on? He's like, look at your girl. She's doing, you know, she's about to tell everything to the highest. Right. So. Elder Mother's walking real slow, walking up on Scumbag Manny. I need to see it the highest right now. And he's like, see, you know, what, what, what's going on, Ruth? What's your plan? What's your plan? She's like, I don't have a plan. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't have a plan. What do you think? What are you going to do? You know, because everybody's always going to Ruth. What's your plan, Ruth? What's the plan? Elder Mother's like, I need to see the highest right now. It's like, well, you know, he's resting for his prophecy. So Lewis rolls over to Manny like, yo, that's a no go. No go. Don't allow her to get in. So Ruth rolls over next to Manny and says, Elder Mother Marva, what would you like? Well, Bridget, she has something to say and she has to tell the highest something about you. She's like, really? What do you have to say? Tell me now. Well, he she needs to tell the highest, not you, but it's all about you and what you did to her. Did you take her to the punishment trailer? And Ruth is like, yes, I did. Yes, I did. Well, you know, she needs to tell, you know, the highest. What, what do you need to tell? What you tell him? 
tell him, girl, tell him. And Bridget's just like, uh, uh, real quiet. And she's like, what does she have to say? What do you have to say, huh? What's going on, huh? What, what, Bridget? What? And Elder Mother, she says to Elder Mother, Elder Mother, you are so jealous of me. And Elder Mother's like, no, I'm not. So here we are with this pig, boy. I tell you, the hog, he's in there just eating, chilling. And Lacey and Zane run over to where the hog is. And she's like, just wait here. So Lacey jumps into the hog pen and she is chasing after this hog. They're going back and forth. <laughs> this is crazy, right? You know, she's trying to catch this hog for whatever reason. We don't know what's going on. Why is Lacey running after this hog? What is happening here? But she is chasing this hog back and forth. Zane is like, what the heck are you doing? Like, Ruth is in an emergency. Like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? So she finally catches the hog. And she wraps the chains around the hog's neck and breaks the hog's neck. So she tells Zane, run and go tell Elder Mother that the hog is dead. She's like, what? She's like, do what I said. Just go run right now and tell Elder Mother that the hog is dead. Obviously, Lacey put two and two together. She took out the hog to save Ruth. So what happens? Daikon rolls up. What is going on here? Well, you know, Bridget, she has something to say to the highest. Well, the highest is meditating for his prophecy tonight. Obviously, he's busy. He's not available. What do you want, old lady? Well, she has something to say. Tell, tell her, Bridget, tell her, Bridget, about Ruth. Uh, 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 uh. And, she, you know, Ruth was just sitting there like, really? Really? You gonna do this right now? Like, real stone face or whatever the case is. She's like, tell her, girl. And she's like, uh, 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 uh. And Bridget is real hesitant to say anything, right? Again, Ruth is just like, all right, let, let's see how this plays out. We're gonna see how this plays out, whatever way it does. And she's like, Daikon's like, tell me, girl. Tell me right now. What do you wanna say? What are you trying to tell? She's like, ah, 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 nothing's coming out of her mouth, right? Because Bridget is scared. And they're like, tell me now. So they go back and forth with Bridget. Bridget, tell us what's going on, right? So Zane comes over and she says, Elder Mother. And Elder Mother's like, not right now. And Zane says, Elder Mother, the hog is dead. <laughs> She's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> if you see the look on Elder Mother's face, she's like, the hog is dead. So, yes, here we go. Ruth is bad. She's like, yeah, she got her face like, and look at Elder Mother. She's like, oh, 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 All right? And she's like, that kind of like, tell me, girl, what's going on? And Ruth is like, I think Elder Mother is confused, aren't you, right? I think you're confused in bringing Bridget here to disturb the highest, right? And automatically, Elder Mother switches the script, flips the script and says, Bridget is telling lies about Ruth and she needs to be punished. She's telling lies uh, all about Ruth and, and uh, you know, I wanted to tell the highest and she needs to be punished. She's like, really? Yeah, yeah, I think you were confused, right? Right, Bridget? So Elder Mother smacks Bridget like, you're going to be punished. I'm going to take you to the punishment trailer. And... Daikon's like, listen, why are you bothering the highest? You know you can punish her yourself, right? He's like, what is wrong with you, old lady? She's like, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> and Rufus is just sitting there like, see? Uh-huh. See, you thought you were trying to get me, but it's not happening today. He's like, leave the highest alone. He is meditating for his prophecy. Leave him alone. Old lady, I'm sorry, Brother Daikon. I'm sorry, Brother Daikon. He's like, just go and take care of this. He's like, this is crazy, right? So again, Daikon is frustrated. Another migraine headache for Daikon. Ruth is like, mm-hmm, see, see, you ain't getting me. No time soon, chick. She's like, he's like, listen, man, get out of here. This is crazy. Daikon is already frustrated about the prisoners escaping and not having the combination. And she's just like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Just shrinking another embarrassing moment. So Elder Mother's like, Bridget, you're going to the punishment trailer right now. And Ruth is like, no, she's not. She's not going anywhere. You know, she's not going anywhere. And she's like, Ruth, Ruth. And Ruth is like, you want to talk about the hog? <laughs> and she just... Elder Mother gets real quiet, like, 
you know, okay, well, uh, Zane, take her, take her to the kitchen. And she's like, no, she's not going there. She's like, what? And she's like, go to the well. Just go to the well. And she's like, so you were really trying to kill me, other mother, huh? She's like, no, I wasn't. What's going to happen when I tell the highest after I'm doing him and screwing him and I nibble on his ear and tell him that you tried to take out the baby, huh? Try to make me miscarriage, right? Huh? What's going to happen then? No, don't tell him. Don't tell him nothing. Don't do it, Root. And she's like, my name is Ruth, not Root. <laughs> right? Once again, we're correcting Elder Mother Marva. And she's just like, oh, no, no, I'm not trying to do anything. She's like, well, why, did, why are you apologizing? Because I, I treated you so bad. And she's like, bitch, let me tell you something, okay? Don't you ever try to play me in a whole nine. Like, you know what? You need to just leave and go to the kitchen and we'll talk about it later. She's like, uh, uh, yes, Elder Mother. And then she turns around and says, whore of Babylon. <laughs> So we're back at the sheriff's office in the jail with Malcolm and the sheriff. And Malcolm still can't believe that Mac took himself out. And the sheriff was like, yeah, he took himself out and all of this and that. And, you know, Andrew's just like, man, like, how did we get here? How did you get here? And how did you get involved? And really, the sheriff was just like, man, I got cancer. I got all this and that. I just wanted a better life. And, you know, Andrew's really questioning him, like, how did you get involved with the rock who? And it's exactly what the sheriff said. He said that he just won the money and some booty. <laughs> and yes, shout out to Robert Craighead. He stopped by the Ruthless Roundtable, explained that to us, how the sheriff got involved. So definitely check out that live that we did the other day. So Andrew, again, is just like, wow, like, really? So the sheriff goes in and talks about this girl, Trudy, with the fat booty. And Trudy was just a piece of booty. That he loved to get with. <laughs> right. And of course, Andrew's laughing. He's like, nah, I never heard of her. I've never seen her before. You know, but the sheriff is like, man, I don't care about none of those people. You know, they can run up in there and do all this and that. And he's like, well, what about the children, sheriff? Do you care about the children? And Andrew definitely pricks the sheriff's heart and says, yeah, I do care about the children. So Andrew's like, yeah, cold hearted sheriff definitely has a heart, huh? Right. You, def you definitely have a heart, man. So you have a heart for the kids. You don't want the kids to be taken out. So we got to stop them from going up there. Right. So the sheriff is like, hey, you know, I'm an old man. Let me go to the bathroom. Right. So he calls the guy in. The guy puts the handcuffs on him after saying he was going to go and ask. He's like, you don't need to ask them, man. You know, you don't need to give me a cup. What I got to do can't go in a cup. Right. So he gets the guy to take him to the bathroom. I'm thinking that the sheriff may try to take this guy out and try to get away. We shall see as Andrew watches him walk away. We're back at the well. And yeah, Zane and Lacey are getting on Bridget. Are you crazy? You could have got yourself killed. And Bridget's like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Or are we saying I'm sorry? I'm saying this is the third strike for Bridget against Ruth. And she keeps trying to apologize and apologize. And your girl Lacey's like, you know what? We will drown you in this well, right? We will drown you in this well. You trying that stupid stuff over here. Like, get up out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, just get away from us. And look at Zane's face. She is so satisfied by this that she did not get Ruth. So Lacey is just explaining how, you know, she felt bad about taking out the hog. And Zane is just like, no, you did a great job. You saved Ruth. You did so amazing. And she was like, yeah, yeah, I just want to get up out of here, you know, and all of this and that. So they did a good deed by saving Ruth from the perils of what would have happened if Bridget would have told the highest. So they're satisfied. They're happy. They're hugging each other for the first time in a long time. And Zane has definitely been a good friend to Lacey. And they absolutely are just hugging each other like, yeah, we're going to get out of here. We, we're sticking together. Ruth rolls over and says, hey, ladies, what's going on? And Zane is so excited. She's like, Lacey killed the hog with her chains to save you. And Ruth is like, oh, my God, you did that. That is so good. Thank you so much. Now, again, this is after they have bonded. Lacey apologized. You know, Ruth forgave her. And she's like, yeah, you know, I just I did what I did. You know, I felt bad about doing it. But, you know, I just wanted to save you. She's like, you know what? I'm going to get you out of these chains, Lacey. And we're going to get you right. We're going to get you right. She's like, really, really? You're going you're gonna to do this? She's like, yes, you don't have to worry about elder mother anymore. You know, go back, get some food, you know, get cleaned up 
and change into the regular robe. You don't have to wear that red robe anymore. You don't have to worry about Elder Mother, right? So now she is telling Zayn to go to the kitchen and watch Elder Mother. Here comes dumbass Bridget, Elder. And Ruth turns around like, are you crazy? I told you before that if you try some crazy stuff, I would take you out. She's like, you know what? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Elder. I'm sorry. She's like, you know what? Go to the car. She's like, please don't. don't." She's like, go to the car. If I got to tell you again, I'm a freaking j- just go to the car, Bridget. You know what I'm saying? Like, again, this is Bridget's last straw again. We're thinking that next episode, Bridget is going to be out of here because, again, this is the third strike against Ruth and Ruth can't trust her. We can't trust her. Nobody can trust Bridget. So I'm believing that, yes, eventually Ruth is going to have to take out Bridget because Bridget is trouble. Here comes River scaring your girl Joan and she's all drinking the moonshine like, I can't believe this. You know, Ruth is mad at me and, you know, did she tell you about the account? And River's just like, yeah, yeah, she told me. She told me, right? She's like, He's like, what, what, well, tell me what happened. Well, I put my name on one of the accounts and he's like, are you crazy? You know, that was a crazy move. And yeah, I threatened Ruth. He's like, are you out of your mind? You, you, you must be dumb or something, right? She's like, yeah, I know. And you know, I think Daikon's going to find out. And then we kind of find out that River didn't know about the account. He was just saying that he did so she could tell him, right? So he tricked her. So he's like, you know what? Maybe I can help you out. It's like, well, he's going online. He has the hot spot. He's going to see my name on the account. And River's just like, you know what? Let me try. Let me see what I could do to, you know, get Daikon away from trying to figure this out. Right. So she's like, oh, my God, they're going to find out. She keeps drinking the moonshine. He's like, stop drinking. Relax. I'm going to do my best to try to, like, detour Daikon from seeing your name on this account. Right. So we're back at the sheriff's office. Aaron is explaining exactly what happened and how he escaped. Right. So they proceed to show Aaron some pictures just to see if he can identify. Right. So they show Brian and Lynn. Right. We haven't seen them in a long time. And Aaron's like, yeah, I saw them. I saw them. And then they show your boy, Andrew. Was he up there? Yeah, I saw him up there, too. They was all on a punishment trailer. And then they show a picture of Malcolm in a car. Right. Desiree shows a picture. It's like, yeah, I saw him, too. They were all up there. And he was like, yeah, I saw her, too. I saw that that young lady. They're all agents. He's like, yeah, they're all agents. Like, well, I saw all of them up there. Are they still there? They might be. I don't know. They might still be there. You know, he's like, well, we need to go up there and get my wife. And she's like, listen, we're waiting for a warrant. He's like, we don't need a warrant. Let's just go in there. And he's like, well, what about the children? You know, we don't want the children to get hurt. And Aaron's like, there's no children up there. I didn't see any children. But Desiree's like, well, they probably locked them up. And Aaron's like, yeah, you're probably right. And there's no children on the campus. As we know, they are at the Hotel Raku waiting for, you know, the rest of the money. So the highest can buy it. Right. But they don't know that at all. So your boy Aaron is just real frustrated. And they're like, listen, can you call somebody? And all the senators don't want to touch this because it's election year and they don't want any, you know, unalived children on their hands. Right. So Aaron is like, listen, I want to go in there and talk to, you know, the guys back there, you know, Andrew and the sheriff. He's like, why? No, I just want to help. No, you're helping right now. You just just chill. Don't go back there. Don't talk to him. You'll be all right. Right. So Aaron just wants to do something because he feels useless at this point. He gave him all the information. But Cal is like, listen, don't worry about it. We're going to take care of it. Let us do our job. Don't worry about it. So River rolls over to Daikon on the computer. And he's like, hey, Daikon, uh, what's going on? He's like, what do you want? Don't call me brother. <laughs> he called him brother. He said, don't call me brother. He's like, hey, you look frustrated, man. You need any help with that? I don't need any help. So River's like, okay. And he walks away. He's like, come back, River. I need help, right? So he's like, okay, yeah, you know, I went to school for computers. So, you know, I can possibly help you out, right? So River looks at the screen and says, well, it looks like, uh, you know, this safe is obsolete, Right. And he looks at Daikon like, do you understand what obsolete means? <laughs> and Daikon's like, I understand what obsolete is. You know, he's like, but I'm looking for the combination. Right. He's like, well, I can look at it for you. He's like, don't touch the computer. You know what? All right. Here, sit down. Look, at, look into it. Right. So he's like, you can't find a serial number, the model number, anything else like that. 
But River says that he can look into it. And again, Dot Con's being very careful. He doesn't want River to do anything crazy. He's like, yeah, well, I can still help you out or whatever. And River starts to walk away with the laptop. He's like, stop playing. Give me back the laptop, right? He's like, okay, I'll give it back to you. And River goes, oop. And he trips and drops the laptop on the screen and breaks the screen. And Tycon is like, I could just rip your throat out of your neck right now. Like, ah. <laughs> Like again, another frustrating moment for Daikon. This is Daikon's most frustrating episode ever. He's like, just get out of here. I'm going to kill you. And, ah, like, again, Daikon get nothing right. But River walks away smiling because he broke the laptop. Therefore, Daikon can't see that Jones' name is on that account. And yes, once again, this is just a detour for right now. But again, another migraine. For Daikon. Do you feel bad for Daikon? I don't know. So here we go with Aaron. Not listening to the cops. You know he got that privileged thing going on. He just thinks he can go anywhere and just talk to anybody. But yes, he's talking to Andrew. He's like, what do you want, white boy? Like, what do you want with me? He's like, yo, I just want you to help us out. He's like, well, they're trying to pin this on me, man. I'm not helping out with anything, man. He's like, yo, I'm saying this. Like, Children up there and all this and that. He's like, listen, I know about all of that, but what do you think you're doing? Listen, my wife is up there, too. He's like, listen, remember you left me in the punishment trailer. Well, I didn't have a choice. Oh, no, you had a choice. Well, if I did that, we all be gone. He's like, yeah, you're right. So they're going back and forth talking about this. And Aaron, again, is trying to plead with Andrew to just tell him everything. Here comes Kyle like, yo, what are you doing here? I told you not to come back here again. You know, that privileged rich kid stuff. And again, Kyle is looking at Andrew like, yeah, we're not letting you out anytime soon. You still got to account for the arson that you did. And Andrew's just like, come on, man, just let me out. Let me out, man. You know, I'm not going anywhere, but you got to let me out so I can help you out. So River runs back to Joan like, hey, you know what? You need to thank me. Stop drinking that moonshine because I broke the laptop so Daikon can't see that your name is on the account. Well, he's just going to get another one. It doesn't matter. You know how Joan talks. It doesn't matter. Here comes Scumbag Manny. Joan, the highest wants to see you right now. It's like, okay, I'll be right there. Right? You know how she talks. And she is so scared now. She's like, oh, my God. You know, the highest. He knows already. He knows my name is on the account. And River's like, calm down. He doesn't know that. They didn't see that. It's like, yes, he knows already. I'm, you know, smell. Do I smell like moonshine? No, you smell fine. Just relax and go see the highest. So the highest is meditating or trying to meditate. And here comes Scumbag Manny with Joan. It's like, your highest, how can I help you? You know, and he's like, you know, I was trying to meditate for whatever reason. And I heard some voices and I want to know something. You know, I, I, I saw you in my vision, he said. He said, uh, are you arguing with Ruth? And she's like, arguing your highest? No, I'm not arguing with Ruth. No. Well, I was trying to meditate and I looked outside that window right there and I saw you and Ruth going at it. What's going on? Oh, uh, uh, no, no, we weren't arguing your highest. No, it was nothing like that. No. He's like, listen, you better not be lying to me. Like, you know, I'm the highest, right? You know, I saw you in my vision. No. Well, what were you talking about? We were talking about how happy we are to be here with the raccoon. He's like, really? He's like, listen, don't lie to me. So Joan literally tries to run out and say, let me go get Ruth. He's like, nope, you don't have to do that. Stay right here, right there. Yeah, Ruth is on the way. So Joan is so nervous at this point because she is hoping that Ruth is, goes along with her saying that they were just talking about how happy they are. But again, the highest doesn't believe her because he saw the conversation of Joan cursing out Ruth. Right. I mean, look, when they say walls have ears, he literally saw them outside the window. So he tells scumbag Manny to go get Ruth. And Joan is just like, is there anything I can do, you know, for you? And he's just looking. He's like, listen, this is your last chance. You better tell me the truth. No, no, no. And, and then again, she is so nervous and you can tell and he can tell. Right. We'll see what happens. 
Here we are with Malcolm running through the jungle, the woods, trying to get away, but he is sick and he comes across one of those bear traps. Bow, grabs his leg, breaks his ankle, whatever. He's lying there. Uh, uh, uh. And here comes George with the blicky. Like, what are you doing here? What are you doing out here? Right, right. And yeah, your boy rolls up on Malcolm and Malcolm's like, please, please. No, 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 please. No. And George is pointing the blicky at him, pointing the strap at him. What's going to happen next? What is happening? He's like, what are you doing out here? And it looks like George is about to pull the strap on Malcolm. And then we see a jerk move. What's going to happen next? We shall see in the next episode of Tyler Perry's Ruthless.